Hi, this is Shiro of the Dr. Vax channel. And today we're going to look at a different technology. It's not woodworking or electronics or 3D printing. It's laser engraving. One of the things that's so very interesting about the world we live in today is the price of technology for the fabrication of products. The price for making stuff has just gotten unbelievably inexpensive. Not necessarily for manufacturing things in volume, but for making things as an individual for your own satisfaction or to sell on Etsy or online somewhere else. Today, we're going to look at a $100 laser engraver that is able to engrave on wood, on leather, on various plastics, and it even can be used to engrave on painter's tape to make stencils. So stay tuned and let's learn something together. The laser that I'm showing you here, which comes originally without the plastic shields. I added this laser filtering plastic to the machine because originally it shipped with dark glasses. But since I use this with my grandchildren, I wanted it to be completely safe. So I ordered this from a medical supply house and added it. This laser is designed to engrave small items and it will only cut very thin cardboard or paper because its total power is a thousand milliwatts. That makes it a low-end laser, but sufficient for burning in wood. So let's look at the overall characteristics of this laser. The laser has a maximum image size of 490 by 490 pixels. Now, why is the image listed in pixels? Because in essence, this laser only knows how to draw dots. So any image, any type, anything you want to print, engrave on this laser, must be converted into dots. And they ship software that will do that. In fact, they advertise that software is available for Android phones, for iPhones, for Macs, and for PCs. I've only been able to get it to work with a PC and with an iPhone. I haven't tried an Android phone, but I couldn't get it to work with my Mac. Now, if you look at this laser, and if you go onto Amazon and you search for desktop lasers, you'll see a variety of brands where they all look like this. And the reason for that is they're all manufactured by one company, NEJE. -E. I'm not sure of the correct pronunciation. And NEJE -E makes a range of lasers. Most of them look like this. There are other models. And they range from 1,000 milliwatts to about 3,000 milliwatts. So this is strictly a laser engraver. Now there's a backstory, there's a bit of mythology about this particular laser. I don't know if it's true or not, but it is interesting. For those of you that have been around for a while, you remember DVD players and DVD writers. Those were special drives for you could put in a PC or a Mac and you could use to create your own DVDs. Those DVDs used lasers in order to right on the circular surface. And the mythology is that many of the components that were in these DVD writers have been repurposed by the company that makes the NEJE -E lasers. Okay, what can't this laser do? It can't engrave in metal. It cannot directly engrave in glass. But there's a trick. Because you can use this laser for making stencils, the stencil could, in essence, be paint. So if you took a glass object and you painted, perhaps, um, black nail polish on it, 
and you loaded it in here and you engraved away the nail polish, you could then use an engraving compound, a special type of acid that you would wipe on the surface and it would only burn through where the nail polish had been removed. So very, very practical laser. What do I use it for? Mostly I use it for making wooden Dr. Vax business cards and tags, luggage tags and other tags for friends and family. Um, these are a very big hit. And in fact, this is just a lot of fun to play around with. Now let's take a look at the software. If you take a look at my screen, you'll see I have two versions of the NEJE software. Now, one of the challenges of all these rebranded lasers is depending on the version you get, it might have a different version of firmware. Firmware is just the name for software that's in a piece of equipment. Often you can't modify that. So while there is a newer version, version four of the software, that's not compatible with my model, which is about a year old. So I'm going to use version 3.6 of this software. And it works basically the same, whether you're using the PC version, the Mac version, as I said, I couldn't get it to work, maybe someone else can, or even the newer versions. The layout of the screen is slightly different, but the concepts are the same. So let's start by opening this application. And you will see that it will automatically connect to the laser if it's on. The way you turn this on is on the back, in this little hole is a button. You press that button to turn on the laser engraver. On the top is a red button. Think of that as the emergency stop button if you wanna stop it when it's running. Now, once you've turned it on, you need to take the material you're going to engrave on and place it into the laser. I've put some blue painter's tape on here to make it easier for me to align that properly. And you hold it on this surface with a, just a couple rubber bands. I think it actually shipped with two rubber bands. I'm using one right now. Now, once you have it in there and you have it connected, and you can see here on the screen, it shows that it's connected. You can click on Rectangle Locate, and it will draw a rectangle around the center of the area that this printer would print or engrave on. Then you can click on Center Locate to move the dot back to the center. So you can use that to align your work surface the way you would like. Now, once that done, that's done, you just drag an image, a bitmap image, let's say a JPEG or a BMP, onto the screen. And depending on the version of the software, it will give you two choices for how it's going to digitize it. Newer versions might have more. I'm going to click, click on this version. Now I can click on the button shrink if I want to make it a little bit smaller. I can click on the button rotate to turn it. I can click on the button clear to clear it away or reload to reload it at the original size. We're going to make this a little bit smaller. Now, the next thing you need to set is how long the laser should remain on for each dot it's going to burn. I'm going to start at 30 milliseconds, which is sufficient for um, leather and for easy to burn wood. When I'm burning through materials, making something like a stencil, I could go up to 60 or even 80 milliseconds. Once you've done that, you need to send the image from the screen to the laser. To do that, you click on send to machine. Now on the iPhone application, um, I believe it's called upload. So you need to send the image to the engraver. I'm going to click on send image. Over here, you'll see this happens very quickly. Now one note, if you're using the iPhone application, then on the iPhone application, it takes a really long time to send an image. It's not broken, it just takes a long time. It's like two minutes. That's not like two moments. That's 100, 
20 seconds. So it takes a really long time to send that. So if you're using the iPhone, just be patient. Now, once you've done that, you can click on the button that says start. And I'm going to put um, the shield up here on the side since I'm looking through this side, but you'll be able to see this through the front here. I can click on start and it will start engraving the image. Now let's switch for a moment to a picture of an engraving while I talk about some of the other characteristics. One is that while it's engraving, it's giving off smoke. So right now it smells like I'm burning logs because the smoke is coming from burning wood. I will tell you, when you burn through painter's tape, it smells terrible. So depending on the material, you may want to do this in a very well ventilated area. The next thing that you can do is you can click pause at any time if it's not working the way you expected. And I would recommend you have a number of samples that you can use to get the burn depth correct. If you set the burn time too long, you're going to get blurry letters. Finally, and let me pause this now. Finally, if you look at this laser, it looks like a knob on the bottom. That knob right over there is used to focus the laser. So when you turn it on, you get a very light blue dot. You need to focus it so that dot is as sharp as possible. The smaller the dot, the better the focus. Okay, at the end of the day, you can go on to Etsy like I did. You can buy leather blanks and make beautiful um, logos, you can make bookmarks, you can make other types of labels. Um, I'm enjoying having this. And at $100, you know, if you get custom made leather uh, luggage tags, I don't know, what are they? 10, 12, 15, 20 bucks a piece? So at 100 bucks, it doesn't take very long to pay for this product. So do I recommend it? Absolutely. I think the hardware is very well done. Now, I will tell you there are some reviewers that say you have to be worried about this overheating, but this um, engraving took about, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes, and it wasn't a problem at all. The disadvantage of this product, the NEJE product, and there are different models, as I said, is that the software is a bit tricky to get set up. I'd recommend your printer will come with a link to the proper software for the printer. You may be stuck with that version. You may or may not be able to upgrade. So I hope this was helpful. I hope you learned about another desktop fabrication maker tool that you can use to add a bit of professionalism to your projects. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, recommend this to other people. Have a great day and let's continue to learn things together.